Long time no see. Still live, still kicking, still doing stuff. And today we're going to go ahead and unwrap some goodness here in the form of a LDO. Well, does it say anywhere here? It's a box turtle, but LDO BT AFC automatic filament changer kit. Automatic filament changer, all from our friends LDO via our friend Chris at KV3D, who must let the spice flow, or the spice must flow. Um, movie reference there, if you know what it is, leave a comment. Uh, and we'll slide that aside, and this came in the box too, because Chris is extra special, uh, and this is going out definitely to some of those people out there in the UK and some other places where I know this isn't the case, but um, these right here, these rubber wheels feet set so basically rubber feet and little rubber wheels to go around for the uh, spinning mechanisms for the filaments um, <clears throat> a lot of people that are selling these kits uh, these these first run box turtle kits from LDO aren't supplying these pieces here because they weren't available uh, strictly at the time of when they put these boxes together uh, but Chris has gone the extra mile KB3D uh, they have purchased these uh, and have gotten these and are including them with the, the kit run that they have. Just another reason why I always like to give props and uh, send out a shout out to Chris and KB3D for all the stuff they do because um, that's pretty cool. I know for a fact there are people around the world who have these kits that did not get these and they were told by the person that they or the company they bought them from to go ahead and print them in TPU, which is Annoying to say the least. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a uh, surprisingly 80s retro looking box, if you ask me. Um, it's uh, almost like uh, I think there was a candy called or bubblegum called Stripes or something like that. It was like a zebra thing. And it had like, anyways, this is what it reminds me of. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, Box Turtle AFC uh, from Armored Turtle and Kind of on there pretty good there so let's unwrap the flavor here whoa and that's probably stuff for me uh brown box so we're brown boxing it huh all right and i have not opened this looked at this or anything we have a very nice packet documents inside so um very nice, very nice LDO, very nice. It looks like a bomb. So what they're doing is they give you a copy of the bomb that they've put into this. Um, and that includes, <laughs> hundred zip ties. That includes uh, uh, check one and check two. So, so you can go through and check and make sure you have everything you need. Would have been really cool if check one was already filled out. Um, you, <laughs> I hate to say this, even if it was fake check marks from check one, because obviously they got to do some QC on their end, but show you that somebody checked it on their end and you check it on your end, it'd be kind of cool. Um, but anyways, if you want to double check it, you have two uh, columns there to check them. Or maybe mine just wasn't checked at LDO, I don't know. <clears throat> we'll see. All right, so most important stuff that's in here is this right here, because it caught my eye. A little turtle keychain that my daughter will definitely love. So we'll definitely have to do something with that. That's that's gonna go to Haley. Um, pretty cool. That's pretty cool stuff. All right, um, get rid of the trash. What else we have, what else we have? We have a LDO BT AFC kit cable. Uh, includes, it looks like uh, prep for all four of the channels going here, all load channels, a hub, uh, RGB cable and a jumper cable in there. So basically all prepped up, all pinned out, all cut to length. And since this is a complete kit, that's definitely an RGB connector right there. Um, since this is a complete kit, that means that everything should basically work the way it should um, without any modifications required. Uh, we have some stepper drivers right here with some heat sinks. Uh, for people that don't know, if you have pick and place components, this, this is actually how most components come. Uh, it's kind of 
maybe it looks kind of odd to you seeing it like this, but uh, here's some uh, Pi Pico Zeros. So when these are produced in mass, uh, that's that's how they come. They come in a protective baggie like this. And uh, believe it or not, this is kind of like the old printers where it can pull them through and pick and place these types of things. So that's the same type of packaging you have there. So uh, that is basically just as raw as it comes when you're getting stuff. So there's our stepper drivers and some blue heat sinks in there. We have uh, some different lengths of Bowden tube. We have a white, a clear, uh, we have some PETG to do some printing. Everybody, I don't know how many of these small things I've gotten. I have my own PETG, PETG clear, but there's some more for us. Uh, hardware for wheels. So it's nice to see everything separate out. So right here we have our wheel hardware and the fill matrix kit. So this is actually probably one of the most complicated part of it. Uh, this comes with some springs, some ball bearings, uh, probably a blade or two in here, I would imagine, someplace. Uh, but that's part of the cutting me mechanism that you have inside of the uh, of the unit to basically cut your filament off when you're doing your filament changing. Uh, TN buffer BT hard mounts. So, 100% not sure on that one, but separate it out. And let's see, what do we have? Ooh, nice. The main kit. And I see some some gearing there, which has a good feel to them. I, there's even a drill. Maybe I open that up. There's a little drill bit in here. <clears throat> it's always nice to see when companies go a little bit further than they need to. But yeah, they, they've gone ahead and provided us with a two millimeter drill bit right there. So that's kind of cool to have in the kit. Uh, I know for a fact I don't have a lot of metric drill bits here. Um, I don't think a lot of people in the States do. There's a hundred zip ties they talked about real quick and they're all different colors, which is kind of cool. I'll probably wind up using black ones, but uh, the fact that they provide them is really cool. Look at those little cool guys right there, those little geared motors. It's pretty cool. All geared up, ready to go. Put this in and we have our stepper kit, so stepper motor right here, little pancakes, cool, 1.8 pancakes, four of them, one for each of the drives, each roll of filament, and light board version one. So this is our controller board. Look at this real quick. And <clears throat> so we got a place for our steppers here, place for our our um, stepper motors to connect to. And then we have a bunch of different switches, inputs, outputs, USB type C for setting that up. Uh, a, let's see here, buck. Let's see, five volt source, buck or USB. So uh, there's a buck converter, buck stands for buck converter, uh, basically to convert power from one voltage to another, uh, DC usually. Uh, so there's a little switch here to switch from USB to buck. So um, something to keep in mind there, if you're using USB, switch to USB. If you're using the buck converter, use the, the buck there. And we'll have to do a little bit more research in here, but there's also some status here, five volt 3.3, which is a logic voltage, uh, and then a status LED. A power connector right here, I'm guessing, for us to bring power in if we bring it in. Uh, I don't know what voltage that takes in just yet. I'm guessing probably 24, but that's just a guess. Don't go by that. Uh, let's see, ground. Yep, 24 volts. It says right here on the back. So 24 volts here. If you switch it this way, you use a buck converter. Or if you have a good 5-volt source uh, for your Raspberry Pi or something, um, you can go that way. But based on everything, I don't know how it's going to... You're going to need 24 volts either way. So I guess it's whether or not you're actually powering your 5 volt devices from the USB. Because you're going to need 24 volts for your steppers here anyway. So um, we'll see if there's any positive and negatives when we get to building this thing. We'll, we'll mention in that. <coughs> oh. we got a jumper in our power connector there. And then last but not least we have our frame. What does that look like? 
So I got a space gray. It's very nice. I like it. Big fan of the space gray frames. All right, see if we can get this back in here real quick. And while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and bring up the armor turtle get. And basically box turtle, uh, armor turtle. It's, uh, armor turtle is kind of the, the, um, the, the group, if you will, that developed the box turtle. Uh, box turtle's been used as a bomb. Uh, a lot of people have been building them. I know some people have multiples. Uh, you can have multiple box turtles running on a single machine. So basically you wind up with more than four colors at once. If you want to get all crazy or four different materials or, you know, however you want to do it. So just real quick here. Uh, so box turtle, that's kind of what you're looking at right here. Um, this, to me, this, the particular picture they have on the website gives it kind of an Asian flair to it. Uh, with the green and the gold, uh, emerald and gold, if you will. Uh, so it looks really cool. looks really nice with the gold. Um, not really my style, but pretty cool, right? Uh, so basically you have a four spool hold here uh, with a feed in. Uh, there is a, a box, uh, kind of a kit to go over this, a cover kit, panel kit to go with this eventually. And there's a bunch of information about, you know, basically the, what it does, how it works, what it, you know, is used for. We right have the enclosure, uh, has its own repository. Uh, enclosure does not come with the kit. I don't know if any kit that comes with it, but I'm sure there'll be people that have enclosure kits that come with it. And I'm sure KB3D will have one eventually too. Uh, stepper wiring and whatnot wiring here. Uh, basically control board, the MCU for the box turtle. Uh, right here, yep, 12 volt, can high, low. Uh, then we have our LEDs that we can put in the corners, and then we have all of our load, our prep, and then our N2O, the small motors right here coming off on this far side, and our steppers right here. Obviously, our stepper drivers will go in there, and our USB, which is optional here because we could be using the uh, can to communicate directly with this. It does need to communicate with your, with your clipper instance, though. Uh, we will have to do some modifications to our clipper uh, to allow for this. There's a... Uh, is a modification that uh, you need to add. So uh, let's see, does it say that here, someplace on here? Uh, let's see here, yes. Right here, film and change of clipper machines. Box Pro requires the AFC clipper add-on found here. So if we click on that, we'll see right here is an add-on. So basically it's go back in uh, via the console and basically download down, kind of like you do for uh, clipper screen or anything like that, uh, input shaping, things like that. So. Uh, relatively simple when it comes to that. Uh, so if you do decide you want to do something like this, you're going to have to print some parts, obviously. So they made up this this website. It's our armorturtle.xyz, uh, it's the STL com uh, configurator. And they even have on here the LDO kit. So you click on that, you go through, you make your selections based on the way you want to build this. And it 100% kicks out a STL list that you can have right here. And if you actually go through this, I'm not going to do it right now, waste of time but you can download one zip file with all your stls in it all in one shot and it's just love it love it love it love it love this configurator 100 percent great idea wish more people did it like this um that being said if you want to get one if you're interested in this type of thing uh right here kb3d box turtle 299 uh, it's like a pre-order it's got it in blue black and space gray um uh, Chris, a great place to get the type of thing. Like I said, he's the only one that I'm aware of, or one of the few that have included this. I'm sure there's others, but he's including those when they didn't really come with his first version of it. Uh, and he did not charge an extra five or 10 or 15 bucks to do it. He just put it in there because it was the right thing to do. So that's really awesome. Thank you, Chris. Last but not least, uh, the Arm Eternal manuals. So if you come right here, you have the uh, Phillip Matrix, you have the turtleneck. You have Turtleneck 2.0, you have box drawer right here, and you can view the manual. And so the manual is broken down uh, very nicely. Again, I love the way they're doing this. This is, some people should take some notes here. That's all I get to say about that. Uh, so basically you come right here, you can look at your introduction. Let's go ahead and go right, jump into that for a second. Um, manual is a walkthrough process, tells you eight pages, tells you a little bit about basic use, tells you about part selection, tells you about printing guidelines. So, you know, how you're gonna print your stuff and you know stuff like that and if we go back 
and we look at the frame. It's a build manual just for the frame. as a heat insert showing right there in 3D. I mean, this is just awesome. You can actually rotate this just like it was, you know, in a slicer or in um, a CAD program. So, I mean, this is awesome. This is just awesome. So, anyways, this is the box turtle. And uh, it's going to be a fun build. We're going to get on that and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, should be fun. Appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave some comments down below, and I'll see you next time.